The Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company started from humble beginnings and grew to be one of the largest machine shops manufacturing steam boilers and steam engines in New England. Prior to its demise in 1909, the company housed a vast expansion of modern machinery and a skilled workforce. Many patents and new ideas for improving the safety and operation of steam boilers and steam engines were developed. This created a demand for the boilers and engines produced at the plant and a robust economy for the area. However, a gasoline engine under development at the plant would have transformed this area into the Detroit of New England, but it was not to be. A devastating fire consumed the plant in April 1909 and on that day changed forever the destiny of this area and the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. Born March 19, 1795 in North Kingstown, Rhode Island, Captain Gardner Nichols was a well-respected and talented man. His early years, like most other boys of that period, were spent on the family farm. About 1813, he moved his family to the small factory village of South Kingstown, where he toiled in the mills from day to day with little opportunity to cultivate his mental powers and mechanical aptitude. Following a desire to expand his abilities, he turned his attention to mechanical pursuits and over several years obtained the skills of a master machinist. In March 1824, he ventured out and became part owner with Mr. Russell Thayer, operating under the company name of Nichols and Thayer, located in Hope Valley, Rhode Island. The company made machinery for the cotton and woolen industry. Their first order for machinery was placed in 1826 and was for six looms for weaving woolen goods. These looms were the first ever built in the town, if not the country. The manner of these well-constructed looms quickly established the reputation of the firm for reliability work and a quality machine. From these humble beginnings arose an extensive business with numerous and stately shops, foundries, and other buildings covering several acres. After a long, active, and useful life, his honorable and esteemed citizen died at his home in Hope Valley on October 13, 1881, at the age of 86, leaving two sons, Amos G. Nichols and Henry C. Nichols. The Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company was located on Mechanic Street in Hope Valley, Rhode Island, on a parcel of land that bordered Wood River, known early on as Carpenter's Mills. It was at this time that Gardner Nichols renamed the village from Carpenter's Mills, its original name, to Hope Valley, the reason being he put all his hopes for his future in the valley. Prior to the formation of the Nichols and Langworthy, this location was the site of several commercial ventures such as sawmill, gristmill, and carding mill, all running their machinery from the power of the river. Isaiah Carpenter built the first dam at this site sometime after 1778, and a series of improvements to the dam were made in later years. The water privileges and mill on the Hopkinton side of the river had changed hands several times. In March of 1824, 
It became the property of Captain Gardner Nichols and Russell Thayer. The mill at this time was 70 feet long, 16 feet wide, and two stories high. In February 1899, a unique steam engine governor carried on a flywheel was patented by Henry C. Nichols of the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. The plant engineered and patented many improvements to its steam engines and boilers. The firm prided itself in continuously improving the efficiency and safety of its products. In 1837, Nichols and Langworthy then built a structure known as the Stone Mill, 70 feet long by 30 feet wide, that was two stories high. The company continued the manufacturing of cotton and woolen machinery until about 1853, when the company began manufacturing of printing presses. In 1869, the company completed another addition to the mill, made of brick. The structure was 240 feet long by 60 feet wide, with a wing 40 feet by 90 feet. This new structure was equipped with new and improved tools and machinery. It was during this time that the company began building steam engines and boilers, in which they were very successful. The Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company became very proficient in the construction of steam boilers and steam engines. The New York Safety Steam Power Company sold many boilers and engines manufactured at the plant. Worthington boilers were also built at Nichols and Langworthy. The Worthington sectional water tube boiler was built at the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. The Babcock and Wilcox Company, a prominent manufacturer of steam boilers and steam engines, also contracted with Nichols and Langworthy in the construction of steam boilers and steam engines. Amos G. Nichols was the elder son of Captain Gardner Nichols, one of the founders of Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. Henry C. Nichols was the son of Captain Gardner Nichols. Henry held the position of treasurer at the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. Josiah Langworthy was born June 24, 1804. He was one of the founders of the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. He was a well-respected member of the village of Hope Valley. And in 1843, he represented the town in the state senate, thus becoming a member of the first legislature. Joseph Langworthy was born February 19, 1806 in the town of Hopkinton. At age 19, Joseph bound himself as an apprentice to Nichols and Thayer of Hope Valley, engaged in the manufacturing of cotton machinery. Within a few years, he advanced to become foreman of the shop, and in 1835, in company with his brother Josiah Langworthy, purchased the interest of Mr. Thayer. The firm thus became Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. The Wood River Branch Railroad was organized July 8, 1872 and began regular service July 1, 1874. The Wood River Branch Railroad extended from Wood River Junction on the Stonington Division, New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad to Hope Valley. Stations were located at Wood River Junction, Woodville, Conachet, and Hope Valley. In 1900, 
The Wood River Branch Railroad had three locomotives in service and employed 12 people. The first regular train of the Wood River Branch Railroad began service on July 1, 1874. The inhabitants of the area quickly realized this to be a great convenience that gave them an easy connection to others outside the vicinity. The Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company was the main customer of the Wood River Branch Railroad. In 1900, the Wood River Branch Railroad had three passenger cars in service. There were two bridges on the main line and one of these bridges being covered. A spur track off the main line of the Wood River Branch Railroad extended 200 feet into the yard of Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. Engines and boilers were shipped all around the world. In 1889, engines and boilers were shipped to Germany, Japan, Australia, Mexico, Cuba, and throughout the United States. In 1884, Nichols and Langworthy incorporated with Mr. Amos G. Nichols as president and Mr. Henry C. Nichols as secretary and treasurer. In 1885, the company purchased the Locustville Mills of Mr. W. R. Green and operated 104 looms employing 50 people. In addition, the company acquired other holdings and business ventures. In 1906, the company was sold to a New York firm who operated it under the same name and used the same patterns and patents. Later that year, $60,000 was spent on an addition to the mill. The new plant was for the manufacture of a new type of gas engine developed a few years prior. This revolutionary engine quickly garnered recognition and many orders were received, which called for the expansion of the plant. Construction of the new engine began, which promised great things for the public as well as for its makers. At this time, one of the major problems was gas engines was their inability to take their load from the onset. It was necessary to get an engine under motion and then to throw on its load. But the engine built at the Nichols and Langworthy plant, known as the Dock No Cranking Engine, solved the problem and open the field for its usefulness. This new plant was to facilitate the construction of this new engine. Prior to construction of the new plant, the company was 300 engines behind on orders for the United States government, primarily to be used on battleships. In addition to manufacturing steam engines and boilers, Nichols and Langworthy built chromatic printing presses. On August 24, 1894, a railroad carload of over 20 chromatic printing presses were shipped to New York. This was the first consignment on a contract for over 100 presses. The presses were used in printing government envelopes using two colors. In May of 1876, the firm equipped two steam yachts, one for the nation's centennial exhibition and the other for excursions on the Saratoga Lake. Each yacht was 52 feet long. George Babcock was a well-known inventor and engineer. He was born on June 17, 1832, and at age 12 moved with his family to Westerly, Rhode Island. It was in Westerly that George met his future partner, Stephen Wilcox. 
the two in later years became famous inventors. In 1866, George Babcock moved to Brooklyn, New York and began working for a prominent patent solicitor, Thomas D. Stetson. His reputation as a proficient engineer and draftsman soon brought him to Mystic, Connecticut, where he designed machinery for a number of steam vessels for the Federal Navy and Merchant Marine. In 1867, George Babcock and his friend Stephen Wilcox received a patent for a unique boiler design. The new design minimized the chance for a boiler explosion. The new boiler became very popular and demand for it soared. In that year, the two formed the partnership of Babcock and Wilcox, or Babcock, Wilcox and Company. In 1869, Babcock and Wilcox, along with Amos Gardner Nichols, incorporated under the name the New York Safety Steam Power Company for the purpose of building their engines and boilers. Amos Nichols, president of Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company, was said to have known Thomas Edison. To date, no written record can substantiate this as a fact. Amos Nichols spent a great deal of time in New York at the office of the New York Safety Steam Power Company, where he was president. It was located on Cortland Street, also known as Engine Makers Row. Thomas Edison also spent a great deal of time there. In 1888, Thomas Edison had used Babcock and Wilcox boilers in his laboratory. He wrote that a Babcock and Wilcox boiler is the best boiler God had permitted man yet to make. Edison praised George H. Babcock, a business associate of Amos Nichols and an incorporator of the New York Safety Steam Power Company. The Taylor Manufacturing Company, later known as the Mystic Mills, was located on Richmond, Rhode Island, side of the Wood River and was believed to be the third oldest cotton manufacturer in the United States. Many men from Hopkinton, young and old, served and fought in the Civil War. Upon each Union victory, a large cannon kept at the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company was rolled out and drawn through Hope Valley to Wyoming by many willing hands. Along the route, the cannon was fired off, belching out a deafening roar. On average, about 50 pounds of gunpowder was used along the way. The Locustville Mill, also referred to as the Brick Mill, was operated by Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company in the year 1893. Records show that a vast amount of spinning frames and textile equipment was in daily service. In early June of 1894, students of the graduating class of the State Agricultural College in nearby Kingstown Village visited the works of the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. President A.G. Nichols and Foreman T.W.U. courteously conducted them through the various departments. About three hours were spent watching the working of special machines employed in making steam engines. The visitors expressed surprise in finding such a well-equipped plant in a country village. On Tuesday, April 13, 1909, a fire broke out just before noon, spreading rapidly and destroying nearly all of the buildings of the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company. On the morning of the fire at the Nichols and Langworthy Machine Company, the day started like every other. However, this day would end in the disbelief and sorrow for the many employees of the firm and the townspeople who came to depend on this important place in their lives. 
At noon, many employees went home to lunch, expecting to return to work one hour later. At roughly 12.15, the gas engine shop caught fire and was soon engulfed in flames. An employee of the mill sounded the alarm and the shop's bell began to ring. The distress call quickly brought help. Those first to arrive found the gas engine shop a seething furnace. The building was filled with flames. Before long, the roof began to burn. The fire quickly worked its way through the structure and flames began to play along and under the eaves of the main shop building. On Thursday, April 15th, the owners of the plant came to view what was left. The smoke still hung in the air and the scene of the fire presented only a mass of blackened ruins. A reporter tried interviewing Mr. Dot, who had designed the Dot gasoline engine. He said there was absolutely nothing to say. Walter Rogers was a talented photographer and respected businessman. His passion and skill with a camera has left us with a wonderful look back in time. Rogers took many of the photographs presented in this video.